Hello, this is Anastasia from AnastasiaPopova.com and CrochetForBabies.com. Thank you for joining me to crochet an Octo project, um, Octopus for Babies for Preemies 2.0. Um, this octopus is a little different from my previous one. This one, it still is worked in worsted weight yarn. The tentacles are done the same. The bottom of the octopus is done the same. It's the same technique I used before. Um, the shape of the head is a little different. So if you can, if we look here, this uh, two of those are worked both in uh, I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby. So as you can see, uh, the head is a little bit wider. It's 30 stitches instead of 24 here. It's also three rounds longer. And as you can see, it's the shape is a little different. It's much rounder. If you compare it with this yarn, this one is sugar and cream. It's a little bit thicker yarn. So lengthwise, there's not much difference. Also widthwise, it's about the same since this yarn is a little thicker. But this one, the bottom here is a little more pronounced. I really like how it came out. So if you like this shaping, you can follow my original video. If you like this one, stick around and I will show you how to do this step by step. To make an octopus for preemies you will need some worsted weight yarn, 100% uh, cotton. I used I love this cotton that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I really like this yarn. Uh, you will also need some stuffing, uh, and scissors, yarn needle and a crochet hook. I used 425 millimeter hook. You can use 375 or 4.0 millimeter uh, whatever will help you get a tight gauge so the stuffing doesn't show show through so gather your supplies and let's get started i'm going to start with an adjustable ring hold, hold the short end of the tail with two fingers and the thumb wrap the long end of the tail around your two fingers cross it to the side hold it with the other two fingers with the hook insert under the first strand over the second pull it forward swing your hook chain with the long end that you're holding with the other fingers pull it through the loop on your hook the adjustable ring is completed now i'm going to take it off my fingers for round one i need to put six single crochet into the center of the ring one two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Pull the tail to tighten the ring. Now for round two, So two single crochet here, and I'm crocheting fairly tightly so the stuffing does not show through. I'm also crocheting over the short end so I don't have to weave it in later. I'm hiding it and securing it at the same time as I'm crocheting. One more. One, two. At the end of this round I should have 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Round 3. For round 3, I need to single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochet in the next one. So single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochet in the next one. one. 
one single crochet and then two. One. And then two. Then that split. I'm just gonna redo the last stitch. So then one. So I went all the way around. How do I know that I went all the way around without actually counting my stitches? I look over here and I see that I have two single crochet in this stitch, two single crochet in this stitch, and that's where my repeat of round three starts with the one single crochet here and two over here. So that gives me a good idea that this is where my row round three began. So this is the end of it. And to double check, I'm going to count my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Round three is done. I'm going to start round four. Single crochet in next two stitches. Two single crochet in the next one. Single crochet next two stitches. Two single crochet in the next one. I'm not going to worry about this strand here. I will crochet over it in the next round. So one single crochet next two stitches. Two in the next one. Single crochet in the next two stitches. Two single crochet in the next one. Single crochet in the next two stitches. Two single crochet in the next one. So I am at the end of round four. Let me just double check my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. All right. So now I'm going to make round five. In round five, I'm going to single crochet in the next three stitches and then two single crochet in the next one. So single crochet in the next three, one, two, three, and then two single crochet in the next one. Single crochet in the next three, one, two, three, two single crochet in the next one. One, two, three, and two in the next one. I'm not necessarily counting my stitches when I'm crocheting. What I look for is two single crochet from the previous row. If all increases are done correctly, your two single crochet will be in the last stitch of the pair. Meaning all your increases will line up. So here's an increase in this round. Here's one from before. Here's one from before. 
So there's two stitches in each increase. So in the second one, that's why my, sec um, my increase of the next row goes. So one, two, in the second stitch again, there's another increase. So when I'm crocheting, I'm just seeing what the stitches look like from the previous row. So if there's a one, I put one. If there's a one single crochet, I put one. So when I have a pair in the first one, I put one single crochet. And then the second one, I put two. So this way, I don't really need to know what the round I'm on. I'm just crocheting to see how many stitches I've done. Okay, so I'm actually at the end of round five. So I have 30 stitches. Let me just count to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So at the end of round five, I have 30 stitches. Now, for round 6 through 11, I'm going to single crochet and each stitch around. So one single crochet and each stitch around. All right, and I will see you for round 12. At this point, I have 11 rounds completed, five rounds of increases and six rounds of going straight down. In the last round, I have 30 stitches. I'm ready to begin round 12. Um, this is the top portion of the octopus. Now we're going to decrease and go down to narrow it down a little bit before the tentacles are created. So for round number 12, I'm going to single crochet in the next three stitches, single crochet two together. So single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then single crochet two together. To do the single crochet two together or single crochet decrease, I'm going to insert the hook on the two strands of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. With three loops on the hook, I'm going to yarn over and go through three loops at the same time. And then again, single crochet in the next three stitches. Two, three and then single crochet two together. And I'm going to do this around and that would be six uh, repeats all around. Two together. Single crochet in the next one, two, three, and two together. And I think this is my last repeat. Let me check. Yes, this is my first one, so I went all the way around. Let me double check to make sure I have 24 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24. So for the next round, round 13, I'm going to single crochet all the way around. So single crochet on every single stitch. When I get to the single crochet two together from the previous round, instead of inserting the hook on the two strands like I normally would for a regular stitch, I'm going to insert my hook a little deeper. So take a look at your single crochet two together. Do you see how you have a V? 
like a regular stitch and then one of the that's uh, leaning over it that's what creates the decrease so where I'm inserting my hook to make the crisp decrease deep decrease the one without a hole I'm going to insert the hook under this back strand of the V and complete the regular single crochet right here the reason why I'm doing this actually show you why I'm doing this instead of explaining it so for the next single crochet two together I'm just gonna do single crochet regularly do you see how if I do a regular stitch here there is a hole and it will become pretty big when I stuff it and if I stuff pretty tightly so do you see the hole with a deep decrease you don't see it so i'm going to redo this last one to make the clean decrease there should be a proper term for this i'm not quite sure all right so i'm inserting the hook under the back strand of this leaning v You might have to wiggle your hook in there to get it in. A couple more stitches to do for round 13. And just single crocheting all the way around. Remember to do your stitches fairly tightly so the stuffing does not show through when the octopus is finished. Yep. Okay, so I'm at the end of round 13. Since I did not increase or decrease in this round, I'm not going to recount my stitches, but I should have 24 stitches. For round 14, I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches single crochet two together so single crochet in the next two one two and then single crochet two together single crochet in the next two single crochet two together In the next two and two together single crochet in the next two stitches and two together This is my last one because I see a decrease over here where my sequence started with a decrease and a two single crochet in front of it so at the end of round 14 I should have 18 stitches let me double check 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 Ready. Uh, for round 15 I'm going to single crochet in each stitch around and every time I get to the single crochet two together from a previous round, I'm going to do the uh, deep single crochet here. That did not work. Let me try this again. Okay, here we go.
my last stitch again since I did not change stitch count for this round I'm not going to recount for round 16 I need to single crochet in the next seven stitches and then single crochet two together one two three four five six seven and single crochet two together one two three four five six seven and two together In round 17, I'm just going to single crochet and each stitch around. The purpose of a uh, previous round of getting 16 stitches all around is to make sure we're ready to do the tentacles. Since you have eight tentacles and each tentacle will be worked over two stitches, we need them all. Uh, we need to have 16 stitches in the last round. That's why from 18, we're decreasing it twice to get to 16. If you wanted to do the body a little shorter, you probably could decrease a little more from 24 to 16 and save yourself those two rounds if you really wanted to. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we're talking the last count of my stitches. So at this point, the body or the head of the octopus is done, and I'm going to start making tentacles. Um, round 18 could be a little bit confusing. That's where tentacles are created, so let's do it step by step. So single crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to start making the tentacle. For the tentacle, I will chain 32. And I will make my chains just loose enough for the hook to go through, but I like to keep my chains on a tighter side for this project because I like my curls to be very crisp. Because if the chains are loose, the, tend to, uh, the curls tend to be pretty floppy. Let me check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Now I'm going to make two single crochet in the third chain from the hook. So one, the loop on the hook does not count as a stitch, so I'm going to start counting here. One, two. In that second chain, I'm going to make two single crochet. I'm going to insert the hook just under the top strand. So I'm looking, uh, I'm holding the chain with the V's facing me, and I'm just going on the top strand. So one single crochet, two. Next I'm going to do three single crochet in the next chain. One, two, three. Two single crochet in the next two chains. So one, two, one, two. In the next one, three, one, two, three. In the next two chains, two, one, two, one, two. 
and you can see how the tentacles is already starting to curl. I prefer actually to hold the curls curl while I'm making them. So basically guide them into the direction I'd like the curls to look. Because they tend to go either way. And instead of curling every single tentacle separately, I just like to do it while I'm crocheting. So I'm putting three single crochet in this chain and then two in the next two. The tentacles do take quite some time to make compared to the rest of the octopus. So if you make less chains, then you have to, <laughs> then you have less stitches to do. But I think they look pretty cute with the long tentacles. Remember that your tentacles should not be longer than eight inches when they're fully stretch, stretched for safety reasons. So when I do my chains, I keep them under eight inches. So if the chain is not longer than eight, then your tentacle will never be longer than eight. All right, so now I finished on my last chain. So my last step is single crochet in the next stitch. So then to start the next tentacle, I'm going to single crochet in the next one, chain 32, and continue the process until I have eight tentacles made. So I will see you when the tentacles are completed and we will work on the bottom of the octopus. So I have the body and eight tentacles completed. So the next step, I need some stuffing, scissors, and yarn needle. I'm ready to start with the bottom. For round 19, actually before I started, I need to stuff the body of the tentacle of the body of the octopus, I'm sorry. So here are the octopus, here are tentacles, here is the big giant hole. Um, I'm going to put some stuffing in it. I don't like to overstuff. I can always add a little bit more later, so just a little bit at this time. All right, so round 19. Um, I need to do single crochet in each single crochet from the previous row around. So here's the first single crochet before the very first tentacle. The next single crochet is after the tentacle, so I need to move it away and it's right here. So between each tentacle we have two stitches. Well, I have two stitches. It's easy to find the second stitch and then the first one is right before it. Could be a little bit tricky to get into depending how tight you did your stitches. And 
gonna spread the yarn of the tentacle. Okay, so remove the tentacle, find the two single crochet to walk into. Move the next one. Next. Okay, I went all the way around, so I have one more after this tentacle. So I should have 16 stitches all around. So let me just double check. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so the last round is round 20. And I will be doing single crochet, two together all the way around. So it will be eight stitches. Once I have the first four done, one, two, four so once I have first actually I'll just do five five stitches done I'm going to finish stuffing the body of the octopus and then I will finish the round Still squishable and not too tight so no stuffing is showing through all right I have three stitches to finish as I did my first five so one two So I'm left with eight stitches. Okay, at this point I'm going to fasten off. Actually, I don't really need to create, to do the actual fasten off, I'm just gonna cut the yarn to leave about eight inch tail. Then I'm going to extend this loop until the end comes out. Thread the yarn into the yarn needle. Now with the yarn needle, I'm going to weave, to insert the needle through the stitches uh, under the two strands, like I would insert the hooks. I'm gonna go in and out. Through the remaining loops, I'm going in and out like you were to do a drawstring. So I'm going through eight and then I'm just gonna do one more stitch through the first one. It closes better that way. All right, so once I went all around, what I need to do is while I'm pulling the strand to close the opening, I also need to push the top strands in will give me a much cleaner look okay okay so far so good um, I'm gonna secure the yarn by making a little knot so I'm just gonna insert the needle very close to where yarn came from create a loop and then insert the needle through this loop this will secure my yarn enough Um, I don't particularly like how 
this looks there is a there is a trick to make this look nicer so what I'm going to do remember your double crochet two together so there is a V and there is a leaning V so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the needle under the front strand of the leaning V and the last strand of the bottom V so what it does it pushes two strands forward and it gives you a cleaner look so I'm gonna do it for all eight stitches and I'm gonna go around so this is two three four Seven. Okay, where's my last one? There it is. Eight. And I'm going to pull on this trend a little bit as well. Okay. All right. Now look at this. So much nicer. So all the strands are pulled together nicely, there is no holes. Okay, so I'm going to secure the needle again. I'm going to do the same knot by creating a loop and then going through it. You could do a French knot instead if you prefer, but this will secure it enough. Okay, so once the knot, okay, I don't particularly like the way it came out. The strand is sticking out too much. See how it's not really pretty. So I'm just going to redo this a little bit. I think there's way too many twists there. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just try to hide it inside. So I'm just going to insert. See how there's a bit of a space here? So I'm just going to insert the needle right in it, into it, and hope that this knot will follow. So I'm going in and then just out. did it so it all went in it's not sticking out I'm just gonna do go in one more time just to make sure it stays there all right so now I'm gonna pull on the yarn a little bit so when I I don't want to cut too close to cut the stitches so that's why I'm pulling the strand cutting the thumb some space left and then the yarn will have space to go back all right so the octopus is all finished actually really like how this came out all right well thank you so much for watching and i hope you make some octopus for preemies and i will see you for some other videos don't forget to subscribe thank you so much